Welcome. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Obsession. This is a one to four player deck building worker placement Victorian themed game where you take the role of families in Victorian England. You'll be renovating your estates, managing your servants, and pursuing romance, trying to have the most prestige at the end of four seasons. Now that we know what the winning condition is, let's take a look at the components, setup, and how gameplay works in Obsession. Now let's take a look at the components. You have the supply board. On the left, you have spots for casual guests and prestige guests. In the middle, you have a space for your coin supply. To the right, you have servants for hire and a spot for your objective cards. Across the bottom is the builder's market and to the left side is the builder's market reserve. After the first season, you'll be moving service tiles to the bottom space. And after the second season, you'll be moving all of the prestige rating one tiles to the upper space. Round track. This is double sided, one for the standard game and one for the extended play. The standard game has 16 rounds. The extended play has 20. In the top left, you have space for theme cards. And on the top right, you have a space for the victory point cards. The seasons are broken apart into the purple rounds and the courtship with the purple space in the middle as the final scoring. Pawns, the white pawn is the round tracker and the purple pawn is the first player marker. Gentry cards, you have family gentry cards which have the family's crest in the upper left corner. Casual guest cards, these have a number and one floor de lis in the top left. Prestige guest cards, these have two floor de lis. You have starter guest cards, these have crowns in the top left. Victory points in the top right corner, a depiction, a description, the bottom left has the servant requirement, and the bottom right has the favors. Starting tiles, which have a building in the top right. Essential tiles, these are your brown tiles. Service tiles, these are blue. Estate tiles, or red. Prestige tiles, or purple. Sporting tiles, or green. Hybrid tiles. On the tile, you have the name in the top left. Modifiers, which are in the top right. Requirement in the middle. The favor gained to the right the reputation requirement in the bottom left, and then the victory points in the bottom right. Servant meeples, blue is the butler, red is the housekeeper, black is the under butler, green is the valet, purple is the lady's maid, white is the footman. Coins in 100 and 500. Player board, at the top in the middle you have the family and crest. The top left has a space for the activity you'll be hosting the expended service, servant's quarters, and available service. The top right has the order of play, along with special actions and your reputation. And the bottom right has your family bonus. Organizers, these will organize your improvements. Reputation will marker. Reputation will counter. Reminder tiles, player aids, objective cards, tile draw bag, theme cards. These are used in courtship. Victory point cards, solo cards, solo dice, score pad, glossary, and your rule book. Now let's take a look at the setup. We're going to be setting this up for a three player game which takes 18 steps. Step one, determine the first player and give them the purple first player pawn. Step two, choose a family. In reverse turn order, choose a family, getting the corresponding player board and placing it in the center of your player area. Keep in mind that the family benefit is on the right. Step three, get in place reputation. Get a set of reputation counters to place next to your player board and place the one counter on the corresponding space on your player board. Step four, get in place reputation wheel marker. The family Cavendish starts on four. Step five, get starting servant meeples. Get a butler, housekeeper, valet, ladies maid, and footman and place them on the available service space on your player board. Family York starts with two footmen. Step six, get in place an estate organizer next to your player board. Step seven, get in place a set of starting improvement tiles under the corresponding types. These should have a building on the top right. Step eight, get family cards. Get your starting family cards matching your family crest. Family Esquith gets a fifth member. Step nine, get starter guests. Randomly deal two to each player. These with the family cards create the player gentry deck. Step 10, get objective cards. Each player is dealt five objectives. Step 11, place the supply board in the center of the play area. Step 12, create servant supply pool. Based on the number of players, place a number of servants in the servants for higher space. For a three player game, we'll place two under butlers, six footmen, three valets, and three lady maids. Step 13, create supply pools. You'll place the remaining objectives and money on their corresponding spaces on the supply board. The family Ponsby will get their starting money now. Step 14, place casual guests. Shuffle the casual guests with the remaining starting guests and place them on the corresponding space on the supply board. Step 15, shuffle and place prestige guests cards on their corresponding space on the supply board. Step 16, 
Fill the tile draw bag. Place all non-monument and non-starter tiles in the bag. Then place a number of monuments based on the number of players. In a three-player game, you'll place these sculpture gardens and three more. Step 17, the round track. Place the round track next to the supply board with the white pawn on the first space. Shuffle and place victory point and theme cards on their corresponding spaces. You'll place a number of reminder tokens equal to the number of players. Then place the Fairchild cards next to the board. Step 18, fill the builder's market. You would draw tiles. The improvements must have a prestige rating of one to three, along with four possible service tiles. The brushing room, barn, butler's pantry, or servant's quarters. You would stack duplicates on top of each other. Then place them in ascending sort number order. Now let's take a look at the gameplay. A game consists of four seasons. A season consists of three to four rounds followed by a courtship. To begin each season, you draw a theme card and start rounds. A round. You would advance the round marker, except in the first round, determine if there is a special event, and then each player in turn order takes a turn to host an activity or pass. When you take a turn to host an activity, you would carry out eight steps. Step one, rotate service. Your servants would go from expended to servant's quarters and servant's quarters to available. Step two, check for event, monument, or service hall. Step three, host activity. Choose an improvement tile to host that event and move it from the organizer to your player board, making sure that your reputation is greater than or equal to the improvement tile reputation number and the servant needed is in the available space on your player board. And then you would announce the event. Step four, invite guests. You would play gentry cards indicated by the activity placed. Keep in mind that the reputation on these cards must be less than or equal to your reputation and must have the available servants on the card. Step five, provide servants. Place the matching servants on the tile and cards. Keep in mind that the housekeep can stand in for the lady maid. The underbutler can serve as the butler, valet, or footman. And footman can serve as a valet. Step six, enjoy favors. On the tiles, to the right, and on the cards, to the bottom right, you would get the benefits. You would take the total pounds, take the total reputation, which are the lion symbols. You would go around your reputation, and then once you cross from five back to one, you would go up in the middle. And then you would invite or dismiss guests. Based on these symbols, you would take a casual or prestige guest card based on one or two floor de lis, and you would place it in your active hand. To dismiss cards or the trash symbol, you would take that card and put it on the bottom of the corresponding deck based on the number of floor de lis. Keep in mind, for victory points, you would get a victory point card. Gossip attacks. These are attacks to other players' reputation with gossip. These are marked with attack, and if something is in red, that is something that damages you. For the butler's room, you would recruit from another player or hire two from the servants for hire. Step seven, buy from the builder's market. This is optional. You can purchase one tile from the builder's market that you don't already have. You would pay the bank the cost, including any top right modifiers. You'd place it in the corresponding column in your organizer. When getting a servant's tile, make sure to get a reminder tile. Then slide the remaining market tiles to the left, draw a tile to replace it. Keep in mind that you will not draw a tile to replace until you are done purchasing in case you have Builder's Holiday or get to purchase another tile via a Victory Point card. When drawing, duplicates are stacked on top in the market and you can purchase tiles higher than your reputation. During your turn, you can take special actions. You can borrow money. You would pay two reputation per 100. For service, you would decrease reputation three per servant refreshed and then refresh Builder's Market. You would do that for four reputation. You would set them aside and then add them back to the bag after you're done drawing from the bag. And then step eight, clear player board. You would move servants to the expended section. You would return improvement tiles to the organizer. And for the first time, you would flip the tile and then you would place used gentry cards in the discard pile. When you choose to pass, you would move all of your servants to the available, reclaim discarded gentry cards, carry out the round event, check for monument or service hall, collect 200 or refresh the builder's market, and then you have the option to shop in the builder's market. Then it would become the next player turn, and turns and rounds would continue until a courtship event marking the end of the season. Players would total the victory points of the tiles in the theme category in their organizers. The player with the most gains one of the Fairchild cards to their active hand. They would be able to use this during the next season. This card is then returned at the start of the next courtship. The winner also gets a victory point card that can be used for in-game victory points or a benefit during the game. For a tie, each would get the victory point card, but no person would get the Fairchild card. Keep in mind that the final courtship uses all revealed categories and gets a Fairchild card for in-game scoring. Then seasons would continue until the final courtship when we would go to the wedding bells or the final scoring. The final scoring takes seven steps. 
Step one, improvement victory points. You would total your victory points on the bottom right. Step two, gentry cards. Total the top right victory points of all gentry in your deck. Step three, objectives. You would score your objective cards. Step four, reputation. Score a number of victory points based on your final reputation. Step five, service. You would gain two victory points per servant. Step six, wealth. You would gain one victory point per 200. And step seven, victory point cards. You would score your victory point cards. The player with the most victory points is the most influential family and wins obsession.